if you met me after a show and we smoked a blunt or a joint or we 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 would become friends over that issue instead of having a beer uh, i drink a, a little bit now once in a while uh, but mostly it was just uh, it was like a peacekeeper type right. of thing a way of getting guys to come out and uh like for 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 example there was a wrestler i'm not going to say his name but he's a wwe star now and uh he had some heat with me supposedly over some of the ring of honor stuff but he came out and smoked with me and we talked and instead of having a problem uh, we resolved it and we became i guess friends but i always kept the in-ring stuff that i wanted to do a shoot fight with him or i didn't really like him that much because i thought it would be better to sell that for wrestling everyone knows it's a work but if you can sell them on something more being you know a little bit authentic authentic yeah. then it gives a little bit more uh reason to watch it i guess sure. like the rappers i don't know how many rappers really hate each other that much but if they can hype it up and make it sound crazy floyd mayweather type of thing and i think sure. wrestling misses that guys are all trying to kiss each other's asses so that's much. what's gone now and they is the reason to watch it. yeah and so if i can create a and like aj styles is a guy that i absolutely uh respect the shit out of one of the greatest wrestlers ever period but I would say I think I'm better than AJ Styles I think I could beat AJ Styles I think AJ Styles was uh, potentially jealous that I did a lot of the same stuff as him but it wasn't to knock against AJ Styles the work he did or the man he was outside the ring or how many guys he made look good or his schedule of him never ever getting hurt I don't think he ever really got hurt and he lasted the longest in a very stiff ring in TNA but you can't say that uh, until later on you can say that I want to I think I can beat him I think I'm better than him why don't we do a shoot fight if there's a problem you know I try to create that controversy the Teddy Hart thing was more of a guy that understands really better than anyone else uh, the work that guys put into being wrestlers and then the shoot and the hype of what I'm trying to create which is a a drug dealer character, a gangster character, a, a guy that doesn't give a fuck about anything, that will meet you on the street, in the back, here, but, but at the end of the day, uh, you're putting your life in my hands and I'm putting my life in your hands. And my mentality always was, uh, I wasn't on coke, I wasn't on meth, I wasn't on pills, I wasn't fucking drunk, I wasn't going to rings or matches fucked up. And guys would act like some of the stuff I did was because I was I was a stoner, I was a drug addict, or I was I was smoking weed and it was causing me the, and I said, well, if anything, then marijuana was a performance enhancing drug because it made, I think, my performance is better uh, for a lot of stuff. And it made me heal faster so I could do a lot of these things uh, continually or recover faster so I could be back on uh, another show doing a backflip off of 20 feet. But you think that, that your reputation, you said, was damaged because, because of the, the marijuana I think, uh, I, identification? I, I think the drug, dealer, uh, the drug dealer aspect of which... People weren't clear of what I was doing in the business, but they saw me with money, new gear, a lot of girls, uh, and an attitude where I wouldn't sell merchandise. And that was not because I didn't want the money. I, I believe that it was going to cause me problems with the boys who don't make a lot of money on the shows because they're local, and that's their bread and butter is selling merch. Now, I'm coming in at a, at a high pay rate based on indie stuff and uh, and hard work in my name but and also the flight costs a lot of money because I'm coming from Canada right. and I got to get a hotel usually so there's there's expenses that are, add, are adding up and a lot of promoters instead of saying I just can't afford them continually even though I would like to would make up a story that I was unprofessional or I showed up late or I was I was high or I smoked weed and uh, most of the time I don't think that ever affected a match or or a, a outside the ring a meeting with any promoter mm -hmm. or any guy but it just kind of it 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 put a bad taste in people's mouths i think sometimes and i, I want to clear that up now that the world is more pro marijuana that <clears throat> what i was telling people was i watched a lot of guys die from alcohol and pills and cocaine in wrestling uh, and just because i've watched it for the years i've been a fan and i'm also in, involved yeah. because i'm born in it and as a promoter too, uh, you know the guys you want to bring in. And I would be hesitant on bringing Teddy Hart in on what I read on the internet. Right. But well, hopefully we'll dispel you know, some of you, that. You, we'll go through. You, the, I'm sure you get into. I don't mean to. It. Well, your dad said something interesting. He yes. said, had he stayed in WWE when he was 18, he would have been dead. See, I, I disagree with that. You don't think you would have fallen into? Not a chance. I was very. I the, wasn't doing the drugs then. I already knew. I, the only the, we get into it if you want. No, to. but just the the the. the the demands of the road and the company maybe that you were in you don't think that you could have been led astray if owen hadn't died i think owen and brett had stayed 
I think I would have been completely fine. They would have taken me underneath their wing. They would have put me on a schedule uh, with the gym, uh, with taking, if it was taking steroids, then at that time, I believe there was no piss test for steroids at that time when I signed in 98. So I would have got to go in the gym, do some stuff with proper guidance, understanding information from guys that had done it successfully. If it was doing it clean, then doing it clean, but it would have taken probably six months longer. People have to remember I was 17 and 18 years old, 160 pounds, 155 pounds when I signed. So um, I just think it was not really that my brain wasn't ready it was that my body wasn't ready and i knew that my body was going to get the shit kicked out of it so i created an excuse or a mentality of where i wasn't that hungry or or happy to be there because it wasn't a family thing i went from being from what i signed or thought i was going to sign it brett was there davy was there jim was there yeah. uh, brian pillman was there and the heart foundation was top notch it was they were they were a big deal, and they were doing stuff with Shawn Michaels, with mm -hmm. Triple H, that that whole with Ken Shamrock, with Stone Cold Steve Austin, with Brett. I mean, it was there was no one uh, more connected at that time, or that had the type of pull in the back with all of the boys. Brett was very respected, good sure. friends with Undertaker, and uh, those guys were like basically uh, their own clique. And I think based on my lo my my love for Shawn Michaels and respect for Triple H and the type of work they did, I think would have. Uh, became probably apparent after talking to them in the back for a couple of months and getting to know them. But I never got past that dojo stage. And that was another thing where I had trouble going to the dojo and sleeping at night because I had been smoking a lot of pot to sleep. I had probably ADHD or ADD in the past. I think I've uh, found ways to deal with that just normally in my personality over the years you grow up. And, but I had problems sleeping a lot. So the weed helped me sleep. And uh, I was smoking a lot of weed during the dojo days.